Welcome to the Scranton Running Company. It's the first episode of Scranton Running TV on YouTube. There's Matt and Tia, friendly faces you'll see if you come down to the Scranton Running Company. We opened a couple months ago and we seek to serve the needs of area runners, walkers, and fitness enthusiasts alike. There's our shoe wall. Take a quick look around the store. Today's episode will focus on gait analysis, something we do really well here and, and an experience any customer will expect to, uh, to go through when they come in. And it's, it's, it's a very important part of what we do. So I think we'll, we'll come over now and, and Tia and Matt will demonstrate what a typical gait analysis process will entail. And uh, hopefully it'll be educational and, and, and get people down here and, and looking forward to it. All right, the first thing we would do with ST would be the customer, and I would kind of help her out. I would first, first of all try to find out what she's going to be doing with the shoe, find out how much mileage she's going to be doing, what kind of running she's going to be doing. So that's going to guide me into kind of figuring out how much cushioning she needs and you know, how, how the shoe is going to kind of take, kind of take the, the wear and tear she's about to put on. Secondly, we want to figure out uh, you know, the, then her specific needs according to her foot. So we're going to find out the shape of her foot, which is probably number one. Uh, so I would first say, ask her to take her shoes off. And um, from there, I would then see if she has either a high arch, low arch, flat foot. Now, Tia has a pretty medium to higher arch. So what I'm going to ask you to do is walk a few steps for me. Have her walk back. So right away, I can see that she has a pretty medium to high arch, like I said. And more importantly, her foot strike. It's a little more internally rotated, it looks like at this point. So from here, I'm going to ask you to get on the treadmill so we can kind of get a better look at what happens when she gets up and runs a little bit. So things can change you know, when you're walking to when you're running. So just kind of get her up to a slow jog and maybe a run. Now, Matt, why do you have them do it in their socks as opposed to a shoe? Well, you can see naturally what's going on. The shoe sometimes comes to the foot, so you can't see what's actually going on in her arch or angle rotation. Sometimes the shoe kind of hides it a little bit. So yeah. I want to first see what's going on naturally, then maybe we'll kind of get the shoe on her after that. Like a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in this case, it's pretty much what we expected, and even more so. You know, what I thought initially was even encouraged even more so, because now we're seeing, not only is her arch on the higher side, but look how much she's, she's first of all, landing very much towards her forefoot. You know, uh, left foot's a little externally rotated, but her, her right foot is very much what we call pigeon-toed. You know, so the last thing she's going to want is a stability shoe. What we're going to guide her towards is a neutral cushion shoe. It's going to match the shape of her foot a little bit better as far as a higher arch. You know, like I was saying before, there's two, sh two, two shapes, or excuse me, three shapes of shoes. A, a curved, blasted, or curved shaped shoe, which matches a higher arch person, or higher, arch, higher arched foot. A semi-curved, a last or semi-curved shape, which matches somebody with a medium arch. And then there's a, they call a straight lasted shoe, which usually matches the foot, somebody has a really flat foot, uh, or low arch. You know, in, in her case, she has a medium to high arch, and even more importantly, her arch doesn't collapse at all, especially the third, the third reason, she's very internally rotated. She's not putting any additional pressure on her ankle or arch to collapse in just because of the way her foot's hitting the ground. So without a doubt, she's going to want to look into, well, this is the men's section, but at least you know, where we're going, this is the neutral section. She's going to want to look in a neutral section. Then it's a matter of finding the right brand, trying to couple on, see if she wants a lot of cushioning, a little cushioning. 
Men well, let's go over to the women's section for a second check so we can check it out. And even though you said she was quote unquote pigeon toed, that doesn't impact whether she should be in stability or, or neutral. Well, it encourages her, well, what it doesn't do is, is encourage her ankle to rotate inward. It's going to be hard for her ankle and her arch to rotate inward when her foot's in that pigeon toed okay. or internally rotated position. So her, her, the weight's going to be kind of distributed to the outside of her foot more than anything. The last thing she's going to want is a shoe that's then reinforced on the inside, pushing her weight to the outside even more. Okay. So she's going to want to stay in the neutral category, without a doubt. From, from there, like I said before, it's just a matter of finding that brand that matches her foot shape uh, and just feels good and natural on her foot. She's going to want her, a shoe to just do what she, you know, let her biomechanics do what they do naturally, you know? And we're cheating here, but I know she loves the ghost. I do. So, <laughs> We could skip that part and say she loves the ghost and she leaves with the ghost. So that's that's where she ended up. What she loves that shoe, I know that. But uh, All right. that's a typical typical gate analysis. Excellent. Thanks for spending time with us. My pleasure. We are the area's running center. So come down and see us at any time. Do gate analysis on your own. Thanks. See you soon.